What's going on people? It's Greg with another Excel VBA tutorial video. Today we'll be going over a faster way to delete rows. So let's get right into it. I've got a list of cities here and um, I've got my original code from when we deleted rows the first time. However, say you have a lot of data. So with this data here with all these cities, there's actually over 26,000 lines of code or lines of, uh, lines of data. So if I were to run the same code from a, I'll put the video in the description. So what this code does is it iterates down every row and any row where it finds a particular value, it's going to delete that row. But you have to wait for it to go through each and every row. And that's gonna be 26,000 worth of data to go through. So that's gonna be a lot, it takes a lot of time. So I actually added a timer in the code that's going to tell us how long it actually takes to delete the rows and then also how many rows get deleted. So let's run this really quick. So you see it's running. You see the row starting to get deleted. So it's actually looking for blanks in column I. Still going. So if you have like 50 rows or 100 rows, it takes no time at all. But when you have 26,000 rows, it takes forever. 34 seconds. And 18,936 rows are deleted. Let's go ahead and keep that on the side. Let's uh, take a screenshot. All right, we'll bring that back up later. So I actually have another sheet. I'll just copy and paste this over so this has the blanks in it. All right, so we're back to where we started. So let's go to our another module, blank module, and enter our faster code. So we'll call this code the sub fast, fast row delete. And let's declare our variables. We'll do a, a start. That's gonna be the start. Um, the start for our timer. So we're gonna know how many rows we started with. So that's gonna be long. Then I'm gonna do um, a count the columns, and I'm gonna count the rows. Then I'm going to have I. Then for my timer, I'm going to have a start time. And I'm going to use single. So single gives you more precision. So you want to use single or double whenever you, you're working with time or need like a lot of uh, decimal places. So then I have my start time. I have my end time. Also a single. And then what we're actually going to be doing is filtering the data and then copying it over and then switching the names of the tabs that we use. So I'm going to have a variable called name switch where I'm switching the names of the tabs and that's going to be a string. And then declare the worksheets, the original worksheet with our original data and then an output worksheet. All right, so I'll start my timer. And there's a function in Excel called timer. That's all you have to do is just set whatever your variable you're using as you set it equal to timer. So that'll start your time. That'll give you your start time. And then we'll set <clears throat> our original worksheet as the active sheet. So whatever sheet we start with. So the active sheet will be sheet one in this case. But we can change the name to whatever we want. So we can call this raw data. So that's active sheet. And then name switch, right? It's going to be equal to the, the name of the original sheet we use. 
So at this point, name switch is going to be equal to raw data. So I'm setting original equal to active sheet, and then the name switch is going to be equal to the name of this active sheet. And then I'm going to add a new sheet. And that's going to be equal to name switch. So we're going to add a new sheet. Sorry, before that, we have to actually change the name of the sheet here. We're going to change it to, we'll just call it temp. It's going to be our temporary, our temporary sheet. So this original sheet will become our temporary sheet because we're going to copy the data from this sheet that we want over to the new sheet. And then when we to that new sheet's going to have the name of the original sheet. Hope that makes sense. So now we're going to set our output sheet equal to the new sheet that we just created. All right. So now we'll activate our original sheet and count the columns. So at this point, we don't have to worry about any of this code because we have our original and our output sheet set. So all I have to do is keep that in mind. So now we know our original sheet is this and our output sheet is going to be the new sheet we create going forward. So we want to count the columns and the rows on this, this sheet here, the original sheet. So we'll just do worksheet function count a range a1 and then do that again and a1 and we're going to count to the right to get the columns so xl to right and then three close parentheses And then we're going to count our rows the same way, except instead of counting to the right, we're going to count down. So we're going to do XL down. So now we know how long, how big our range is going to be. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and have start, which is the start, the number of rows at the beginning, it's going to be equal to the columns. So that's there. And then also, I'll set I equal to two. Actually, do we even need this? No, we don't. Sorry about that. Let's get rid of I. All right. So now the active sheet, we're gonna use our filter. So I'll just put a comment here, filter. Um, so A1, auto filter. And then we want filled, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to use field nine. We're going to remove any blanks in field nine. So field nine or column I. And then our criteria is going to be not equals to blanks. And that's all you have to put for that. And now we're going to copy data over with the following code. So we want to use the original sheet and we're going to start off. We want the range starting at one, one. So this point here one, one, 
and then we want the furthest right and furthest down so we're going to just put in our row count and our column count and then I feel like I'm running out of space so I'm just going to go ahead and use an underscore to keep it going keep the line going and we're going to do special cells XL cell type visible and we're going to copy those cells so it's going to filter everything it's going to filter not equal to blank and then we're going to copy those visible cells after the filter is being taking place and we're going to copy and then we're going to paste it to the output tab I'm just going to paste it to 1 1. It's going to be paste special. And we'll just paste the values over. And then we'll turn off the copy cut mode or is it cut copy mode. Turn that off. So we'll just set it equal to false. And then we'll get rid of the filter so it'll show all data on the original sheet. And then we'll also turn the auto filter mode off. Okay, so we'll be also at this point, we've switched the names, we've copied our data over to the new tab. So now we can delete the original tab. So we could just do original delete, right? Original delete, but it's going to ask us if we want to actually delete the, the, the tab and that's going to be annoying. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off display alerts. Mm -hmm. And then we can just turn them back on after that action takes place. All right, so now we want to just activate our final tab, our final sheet. And I like to just select the um, this cell here. So let's say this is like highlighted or something. I like it to just come back and just select that cell so it's cleaner. So we'll just do that. A1 select. And then I'm going to count the number of rows we have now. So I can just bring this back in the play. So we have our start equal to the count row from the original set of data. And now we'll have count row on the final set of data. And we're going to use this to determine how many rows were deleted. And I can also get the end time for my timer. And I've already got this code here. So I'll just copy and paste it over on module two. So it's just going to be a message box that says rows removed. And then it gives me the start row count, which is here. And it subtracts the final oh should be row yep yeah. subtracts the final row count and then if there's a this formatting gives you commas otherwise it'll just have numbers without commas and this just makes it look a little clearer and then it'll say the number of rows and then vb vb new line gives you a, a, a it gives you like a paragraph break or a, a line break in your message box so the next line will say time elapsed and then i'll have my in time, which is here, minus my start time, which is here, and I know how many seconds it took for this process. All right, so we can go ahead and run it now and see what we got. Boom. 
So just like that. Same action, right? If you want to compare to what we had previously. So the same number of rows were deleted. However, there's a difference of over 34 seconds. It took 34.26563 seconds with the prior code and only 0 0.1953125 seconds this time. So it's a huge difference. Um, saves a lot of time. One more thing though. So say that the actual name of your sheet is temp, it will mess up the code, I believe, right? Yeah, see? So what we can do is just throw an if statement in there. Let me unhide sheet two. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it over here so I can get my, my blanks back, yep. Okay, so so the the rare chance that your original sheet name is actually temp, in order to prevent messing up your code, um, you can just do this. So if the original name is equal to temp, then you can just say original name is equal to, let's just say temp one, else the original name is equal to temp. So if, original, if the original name is equal to temp, we'll name it temp one inst instead so we won't have any issues. Otherwise, it'll just name it temp. All right, so let's try running it again. So this, the spaces are here. This is called temp now. Run it and we're good to go. Cranked it out in 0 0.25 seconds. So yeah, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know of any topics you want me to cover. Um, have a good one.